There we go. Hello. Oh shit, is that working? Yes. Okay. Hello. Good morning. It is Sunday. It is 10 10 in the morning. Sunday, May 27th, 2018. Uh, and we're making indie games. What has happened since last we left off? I think, um,. The last time I streamed, I was getting some stuff ready for the playtest. The playtest went okay. I don't know. I should do those way more. Um, I did have quite a few notes that I mostly worked through. Uh, there was a pretty bad one where if you go through... I didn't realize it because I never played through the game like in sequential order, but if you hit a certain narrative beat, you don't... I lock undo and I never unlock it, so you couldn't undo after like the first 20 minutes of gameplay. But it was great. I had, um, I only really had three people play the game, and they, the first guy played it for like over an hour, so that was pretty cool. So yeah, it's pretty good all around. I did that, I fixed a bunch of bugs with regards to that, and then I did a pass on the environment art, which you can kind of see here. Uh, if you go into the main menu. This is not the main menu. You can see I'm just kind of trying to figure out how the world comes together. Um, now that I've done this, I've added a shit ton of particles to the world, so I need to do a pass where I uh, <laughs> profile this and, you know, make it actually not as slow. <laughs> That's what I probably should be doing today. That's not what I'm going to do today. Today I'm going to have fun. But, uh, I don't know, there's just like a little bit, the frame rate's just a little, it's perceptibly not ideal. So it's time to go in there and fix that. I'll probably do that tomorrow. Today, I have more fun things planned. So yeah, so that was what I did over the week. And then, yesterday morning I realized I, I wanted to, one of the big challenges I still haven't figured out is what it looks like when you're actually on the main stage. Like, um... What it looks like when you are. Wait a second. Well, on any of these stages too, but in particular. When you go in and play a level like this, what do I want it to actually look like? Because this is crap, right? Um, like, how do I want the world to draw and stuff? And so I was thinking about it and I was looking at these pages and I'm like, maybe I should, I should go in and animate them properly and. And then I remembered I was playing around with the paper rig we had before, and that was kind of like crap. Like it was fine if you just want a paper to move on a trail, and so I spent all of yesterday coming up with the world's perfect paper rig, which I have done. So here, <laughs> it was a good day. It was probably the best imaginable day. Let me see if I can find it. Alright. Yeah, okay, so now I got the sheet of paper. forgot how I set up the controls. I'm still fussing with it. Like, I'm not really super jazzed with all the controls and everything, but, you know, like, I can just totally move this thing around. I can kind of... I'm not going to do papery things. Looks like paper. I had way too much fun with this. It took me a while to figure out exactly what I wanted, too, because I wanted something that I could, like... I don't know. I, part of this was just I didn't know what I wanted, and so it took a long time to figure it out. What I ended up doing was I created a... I think this will be the best example. Okay, so basically what it is is there's three curves that run... One that runs down the top, the middle, and the bottom. Um... Those curves have these clusters, which are controlling them. The curves are... I didn't delete... I do a rebuild curve on them. So, in the history stack, that happens at the end. So if I move a cluster and I, um... Let me explain this. So if I take a cluster and I move it, it'll re... It'll keep the curve uniform across. That was actually really important, because that lets things slide up and down it. And then I, uh have a lofted a surface between the three curves, and I, uh, I don't know, it's hard to explain. 
It's cool. I got what I wanted. That's a pretty good paper rig. We're gonna keep pushing on that this morning. That's my goal. Hey, Nordle. Good morning. I'm glad you like it. It is, it is in fact, a sick rig. Why does my uh, dashboard look totally different now? Totally different. I just came in here and moved stuff. Oh, it took a while, and I'm still not super happy with it. I like the effect. I'm not sure if I like the user interface. Like, this is... Like, do I... I decided the snap, like, in the moment that I wanted, uh... Because the paper tends to follow, like, the middle... Let me explain this. What I liked as far as animating it was that the middle is where what drives the paper like direction. Like it can slide up and down this kind of this surface. And it's always pinned to the leftmost part of the surface. And I could add a feature so you can change it to be pinned from the leftmost to the rightmost. Or from pin it to the top or the bottom as opposed to being pinned to the middle in this version. So a lot of controls. You should see, there's a rig I did at work that has some similar ideas. Where you can actually change the number of controls on it. That's a huge pain in the ass. And it'll just kind of like update live. But it's kind of slow. I'm not really into this fucking sheet of paper, guys. You have no idea. I was like really into this sheet of paper. I did not need to spend a day rigging a sheet of paper. But goddamn. Is that not the most beautiful sheet of paper? I think we all know it is. Deep down. And it's only gonna get better. Here's what we're gonna do today. Because I figured out what I want. Figuring out what you actually want to do is actually the hardest part. Then you just have to do the, the how. <laughs> Here's what I want. So I kind of started it last night and then I fell asleep. Ah. Uh, Alright, so we have these lines, right? Okay, so what I want is, paper comes up, folds away, the lines come off of the sheet of paper, maybe dance or something, stretch out, come down, and form a grid. And this is the grid, like this is kind of their end location. Their starting location will be obviously on the sheet of paper. I've already set up the, the space switching between being on the sheet of paper versus like any of these controls can be off of paper space into world space, and I can animate that. So that's good. So now, the next step. I mean, they have to look like squiggles. They can't just look like this, right? So here's what we're gonna do. Well, for one thing. Absolutely all of these planes and no, okay, here's what we're gonna do. I know what I want. Okay. Here's what we're gonna do. This is your end location. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep repeating. Here's what we're gonna do until it hits me. Um Wait, how do I want to do this? Do I want to have a blend shape for each line? Do I want them all to be separate or do I want to merge them? I think I want a blend shape for each line, just in case, because it's not any more or less work and it gives me more power. It's a little more set up, but not much. Yes. I need to name these so that I know what I'm doing.
the same as well. Yeah. This is good, this is thematic. <clears throat>
What?
think this has the potential to look pretty cool. Get there. <clears throat> hey, I hope it's okay to come out of the lurker shadows and ask a quick question. How do you know if your game has enough meat to it? How do you know that the idea is you have is worth running with? Is there like a mental criteria that you stick to when you, uh, or had when you were coming up with Kine? Uh, huh. Okay, so that's a really complicated question. I think, well, it's not complicated because I think some of it's experience. Um, and it also depends on what you mean by if an idea is worth sticking with, right? I mean, that goes into a much, a bigger thing, which is do, is this an idea that will make me money? Or is this an idea that I love enough to stick to and finish? Is this something I want to make and I really want to show the world and here's why? Um, you have your own reason for making a game. And so if the idea is good enough to achieve your goal, I think first you figure out kind of what your goals are. Like I need it to make, okay, I need it to make at least this much money. Um, or I need to make at least this much money versus the amount of time I put into something in order to eat. Um, and after that I want to have as much fun as possible and this is the game that I think will do that. Um, and you just kind of, you just assess, does this game meet the criteria that I have, right? So I'd have to know more about what the game is that you're personally thinking about and, and working on. Um, I will say, sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, Okay, I've never worked on a project where at the very beginning we knew exactly what we were making. A lot of it was just we're senior and we knew that we would keep working on it until we found the fun. And there was always a kernel of fun. And you always start with something that's kind of like, I'm really interested in this. And usually you start out thinking, I'm going to make something really small that's just really focused on this. This core concept. Like here, I, if you look at the earliest streams of this, I just really liked... Well, even before the earliest streams, I just really liked moving a character through the world um, in a way where you would move up and then fall onto a certain grid tile. I just liked that, and I, I wanted to experiment with that, and I just kept pushing with that, right? And the idea of that the characters would move each other and stuff like that, a lot of the stuff you get later on, that didn't come up until I was well into making the game, right? There's new features and things that come up later for something like this where you're constantly building on things and it, that doesn't I think that might be more typical in like strategy and puzzle games I definitely know there are games like when I was working on Marvel Heroes Online that's an RPG uh, there was a formula there we knew the game wouldn't be fun at all until we had the core loop of like find stuff kill stuff get stuff that makes you stronger so that you can find more stuff and kill more stuff and until you get a certain amount of content to get that loop churning it was very difficult to know if um, the game would be fun at all or if it was worth running with and in that instance we knew it was worth running with we just had faith because we had the Marvel IP and we had played other games that had these mechanics and we knew how fun it could be and we knew that we could achieve that <clears throat> So in that instance, that's why we knew that game was worth running with. Um, i trying to think of other examples. So it does vary based on the kind of game you're making and, and what you're doing. I don't know if that
that was helpful at all. But I will say, I don't think it's a problem if you're like a smaller developer to start out and not be quite sure if this is going to be a tiny game that's focused on one mechanic or if you're going to find something and and it's going to become a much bigger game. You can It's possible not to know that in the beginning and that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you scope your game so that you make like the smallest, tightest version that focuses on this one little thing you're excited about um, and you figure out how like how much time that'll take and such and you kind of scope to that and then later you can change your mind like it's not like everything's set in stone sorry I should read this out loud uh, that's a good point knowing what I want to out of it yeah the game loop aspect is interesting too trying to think of what people would like to play as well as what I like to make thanks I'm glad that was helpful That's cool. Are you a developer? That was not supposed to be on. An aspiring one. I'm starting my fourth year of college next year, and I have the summer now to nail down a game idea and design doc so I can spend as much time next year making it and getting it done. I'm stuck between ideas and which one to follow. Hmm. That's difficult too, because you have a time constraint. I mean, college is a fun time. You have the world is so full of possibilities, it's so terrifying. At least it was back when I was there. Cause like... Well, if you're smart at all, you're terrified. <laughs> I'm a little bit scared, you might not be paying attention. Man, I hope you find something that's fun. I hope you work on the thing that gives you the most fun. Because there's very... Later on in your career, like, you're going to spend most of your time working for other people. And I'm not saying there's no fun there. There's a ton of fun there. But, like... Just doing what you want to do. It's a good experience. The most valuable experience is not going to be the most fun one. The most valuable experience would be if you got together with a team of people and tried to make something. Not necessarily something big. Don't go out of your mind being like, oh, we have we have a team of six, we could fucking make an MMO. Don't be silly. But, like, in fact, assume that you come up with a game that you could make on your own if you had to, and then get a group of people together to make it. And, uh, learn yourself some fucking soft skills. <laughs> something they don't do enough in college, I don't think. Because the vast majority of jobs in the games industry are not indie, right? They're not small team jobs. The vast majority, like, the number of small teams is not, though they're loud on Twitter, uh, is nothing compared to the hordes of people that work at Ubisoft and such. There's way more work there and you're way more likely to end up working for a larger company. 
Uh, big bad world of game dev and how to get a job after. Sorry. Splines for that. Oh, oh, Remarch, don't you worry, buddy, I have plans. Did you see the earlier part of the stream? This is a, uh... You know, I could use spl Ooh, fuck, I could use splines for that. Oh, shit. Well, then I'd have to have joints for the splines to fall. I want absolute control. I want the... And this is like a... It's... Because what's gonna happen is... This will lay down and the world will pop up out of it. I don't know, I feel like splines might be making it unnecessarily complicated. <laughs> oh god. Back when I was in college everyone's like, yeah, we'll just make a we'll just make an MMO, right? It'll be so <laughs> that used to be the way. I think people are actually more realistic these days than they were when I was in college. Maybe, or maybe I just don't see the like stupid ones. <laughs> I'll pull up some of my old college work. I should find it actually. I might be able to find the first game I worked on. Like when I was in college, there was no game dev track. There was only, uh. There was. At RIT, they had software engineering and they had like a weird side of IT that was new media. It's so like IT slash new media. There's. We started up a game dev club. I didn't. Andrew started up a game dev club and they were scouting artists. And they found me and I had no idea. Like, I went to college to be a, an animator, right? And I figured I'd give up and become a programmer. I just wanted to rebel for a bit. <laughs> and then, but I spent all of my time in college playing World of Warcraft to the point where I almost, uh, it was borderline a problem. <laughs> and then in my third year of college, I, I ran into Andrew and them and they're like, you could use this stuff to make games. And I was like, oh my God, you can make games? There's work for that? Yeah, they'll hire you and shit. You can work on our game, it'll be great. And then I, uh... That's... No, fucking do it for a living. My game right now is a uni project we made half a, in half a year. All I'm doing is making a more polished version of it. Are you allowed to say that, or does your university own what you make? Because that was a big problem for a lot of students I know. I kinda gotta do it on the sly. every single one of these.
that's what I want. You have friends in the speedrun community? I'm in one of those hardcore Smash Bro communities on Facebook. <clears throat> Just to know more about it. <laughs> like, I have no interest in this. I will never go to their meetups. I'm just... It's interesting to me that there's still these underground, like, people meeting up for these tournaments. They organize themselves and stuff. I like the culture of it, I guess. Where's my Zen playlist? Yes. You guys can't hear this, can you? What's up, Ichiro? <laughs> oh, this is weird. Am I hearing myself? Turn my audio. So where is that? Oh God. Oh, weird. Yeah. Never mind. Anyway, hey. I think my stream should uh, contain more violence. Yeah, but then it wouldn't get uh, rated in Australia. Did you see they... What was it? I have friends working on a game. Gion is working on a game called We Happy Few. And it, uh... It, he's not allowed to sell it in Australia right now. Because the ratings board is like, nah, there's drugs. The whole premise of the game is it's like a horror game where there's this thing called joy. And if you... you need to take it, otherwise, I don't know, you realize the world's not good. Uh, and I just happen to know, like, getting raided in Australia is a massive pain in the ass already. You have to mail them physically some... You have to physically mail them your game. And it's to, like, this fucking... middle of nowhere... I, I, I can't even explain this. It's like... You mail this game to the middle of fucking nowhere, bumfuck Australia. I, from what I, it's super expensive. From what I'm gonna tell, they must use like some kind of donkey service to get it the last couple miles or some shit. I feel like if I did that, and it takes like a month. I feel like if I did that and they came back and they're like, nah, I'd be pretty pissed. But I don't know. He seems to be taking it well. 
The internet in Australia isn't good enough to watch streams. I don't know. I just feel like hating on Australia today, apparently. <laughs> I've always wanted to go, actually. They do have notoriously bad internet, though. I have heard that before. Just weird, because I thought America had bad internet, too. I thought that was our thing. <laughs> Being way behind. Oops. This is not what I want to do. Alright. This is gonna get kind of tedious here. But in the end, it will be worth it. One of these days I'm going to bring this webcam over to the Indie Collective each row, and then we should all stream from the Indie Collective. Gotta get the Boston community hyped on the internet. Yeah, maybe not this weekend, obviously. On Thursdays. Do you think they'd be okay with me bringing a webcam? I could just ask. I probably can't do Thursdays, those are always going to be rough. Well, I could go to happy hour. I do like free food. Yeah, I'll do that. Wouldn't mind actually working out of there for a day, though. Sure. We should do like a show. It'll be cool. Saba can show off uh, make sale. <laughs> I don't know what else. Like Graham probably can't show off anything right now. I don't know who else there is stuff to show. You went to a happy hour this week, right? Oh, I've been watching Eric's, um... <laughs> I've been watching Eric's Twitter gifts, but I have actually. They look cool. It does look like Factoria. You're gonna do an art installation? Yeah, Boston does need more creative shit going on. I agree. I support this. Boston is a cool place. We should make it like... I don't know. How do you... Mm -hmm. We have all the schools. We should be able to have more indie devs here. But there are very few. I wouldn't mind there being some fucking Unreal developers, to be honest. I feel like the few indie devs we have are all Unity. I am so alone, each row.
Because Unreal Engine meetups are like... The dire situation. Actually, you know what? Have I given you a Steam build for Khan yet? I need a new deadline to force me to get things back to playable. I used to say I would do a playtest at the end of each month. Friday or Saturday, I'm going to send you a build. You don't have to play it. Oh. Oh, just give me a deadline to focus on. You had get steam build in 512? Oh, I did give you a steam build. Wait, what? Oh, he didn't tell me that. Did you? <laughs> Damn it. Here. Give me a key. I know what I need to work on is the problem. So, like, here I'll show you actually. I can. <laughs> You can tell me what to do live. Here's a Steam key for later. Alright, so in reality what I'm doing is like the least important thing, right? This is the main menu. And my problem right now is mostly comprehension with... this. Like, people figuring out what's going on. When they first... For one thing, there's no opening cinematics. You don't see the world getting built. Not that I'm convinced that would help that much anyway. And the other thing is I kind of wanted this thing where you have these different paths you can take through the world, right? Like, there's these ribbons you can follow. Um, people kind of picked up on that. I did have to tell people to click the first one, and after that they got it. So maybe I need something here. I added the dumbest animation to try to draw attention to the icons. In general, the icons and how this comes together is a mess. In general, the idea... There's an idea here that, like... When you get to these levels... You can choose one of two different stands to fall on. And if you f fall on the silver stand, you'll keep following that path up to the silver stand. And if you follow the black stand, there's like a, a black music stand this way. And so you've got these kind of branching paths you can take. And I have no idea how to message that to the player. The other thing I have no idea... Well, I mean, I added this. <laughs> the other thing was I realized people... As soon as people beat a level, they didn't realize they had to go back and beat it again for the other path. Uh, anyway, yeah. So, like, doing that unlocked... Well, it didn't, because I'm cheating right now. Unlocked this, and then you take this, and that unlocks the stage. But the stage doesn't unlock until you follow both paths. So you have to unlock a music stand here and here. I have nothing that tells the player that. Um, well, I mean, there's like a pop-up, but the pop-up is stupid, right? Like... You've unlocked scroll stage one of two. But this will still be locked until you do the other side of it. And then you'll eventually get to the scroll stage. But yeah, basically the messaging of all that is just not... It just doesn't exist. I just don't know. I gotta think about it. Thinking is hard. I decided to not do that and make art shit instead. <laughs> hey, May. Good morning. Come. 
use dabs of color to convey paths that are unlockable next. Well, I mean, the paths are always here, right? Right now. They don't, I guess they don't have to be. I wanted some sense of progression. The other thing is, um, okay, you're not seeing it here. Let me unlock this. Let me unlock some more stuff. So this is a narrative beat that's missing still. So there is the idea that when you go over this, you see that there's a path and you see like a little black outline for the the next things to unlock the path. I need to be more of this. This will all get better, I swear. So like, now you can see all the- everything you need to do to get to the final stage. Which maybe I should just show you from the beginning, I don't know. But there's kind of like a pivotal moment here where she becomes the accordion. That's just shit to figure out. Oh, that's a bug. I should make that show all of them. Hmm. Should definitely make the drama show all of them. I don't know. I don't know how to convey. Like, I need. I'm probably gonna phone a friend on this one. <laughs> I do know this is a problem. Thinking out loud, there's a bunch of overworld maps that address this problem you could use as reference. Oh yeah, the, the blinking was, like, that was literally, I was really tired. I came back after the playtest, kind of pissed off that this wasn't as good as I thought it was and made I was like I need to just fix something and I just added that blinking and I uh hate it <laughs> so I need to go back and redo that I do like in general the way the world is starting to come together I feel like it's the look is at least congealing like this map doesn't make me want to gag any, like the look of this doesn't make me sad as much it needs work but it's getting there You can only watch my stream at 1080p 60. Uh, I don't know very much. You know more about Twitch than me, man. <laughs> I, uh, it's a black box as far as I'm concerned. I was surprised at some point I just started deleting my videos. Like a, a lot of them. <laughs> like all of them. Glad I backed them up to Facebook or YouTube. Because I thought it was only deleting them after a couple months, but it deleted, suddenly deleted them all the way up to like a month ago. Uh, maybe some service thing changed. I think part of it was I stopped streaming as much in March and they just stopped caring. Super Mario World map. Am I looking at the right thing? The problem is I have so many paths. And it's- I can't bullshit it, because they're literally in the game. Like, they don't go away, they're just there. Right? Which I didn't have to do, but I did it, and now it's done, so here we are. I'm not undoing it. I like it too much. It's cool. I'll undo it if it's really a 
detriment to the game. I want to find a way to not. See, the beauty of a map like this is it's I was, it's easy, basically. Like, you, you just go to the fucking dot, and then that loads into a totally different world that has nothing to do with this world, right? They're not tied together in any way. Whereas this is just, there's only one map and the camera's just moving in. It's just maybe, like, I should have fucking done that. But this is cooler. Like, I don't know what to say, man. Is it cooler? Tell me it's cooler, Ichiro. <laughs> they did get that eventually. They, oh, they got that pretty quickly. The thing I'm... And I added those pop-ups, which will help. Because without those pop-ups telling you, like, you've unlocked an alternative path, uh, people had no idea what was going on with that part. And the idea, I definitely need some icon here that's like one of two. And this has to be like one of three, two of three. Like I need, s I know these stars are temp, I just don't know what they're gonna be yet. UI sucks. Hey May, I did that in the Monday stream last week, I think. Thanks, Citra. At this point, you have to lie about it. It's not going away. <laughs> I've sunk off Falsy real hard on this one. I think Mojico was like, Gwen, it's cool that you have all the levels in the world, but really just hide them all and just show only the one you're working, like the one you're using before I added the levels moving up and down thing. Because, like, you, you know, you just don't need to see the rest of the world. You just only need to see the level you're on. And I was like, oh, Mojico. We can't be friends anymore. <laughs> I know he was right at the time, though. I don't want your realism, Mojica. Fuck off, man. <laughs> Alright. No, I don't have chat set up to strip out links. Oh, blink the next path. Like, what are you telling me to do? I'm actually not sure. I could make it so that the world is desaturated. Yeah, I guess what you're saying here, actually. Make it so that the paths are usually desaturated. There's a different color for the ones you've completed. And then there's a new, like a blinking, make it blink for the path that you're going to do next. That's not the worst idea. That's actually a really good idea. I'm gonna just write that down. Alright. While you're fixing my problems for me, how about the colors? Like... <laughs> Sorry Twitch, you're getting a design consultant today. Alright, so like... Oh yeah, alright, I'll let you go. Oh, they'll all blink, Kayla. Because, I mean, that's the point, right? Like, you can go down and meet the path. <laughs> Later, man. That was smart. If you stuck around longer, I would have just kept asking questions. <laughs> Alright, what was I doing here? Okay.
footsteps are.
gonna have to change the skidding on these anyway. They're probably gonna need five joints. I don't really see any way around that. Possibly more. Because when the paper bends, the lines need to bend with it, right? So, oh, how is this actually going to work? Oh, I didn't throw all that effort. Well, I need to make that anyway. Well, they could be joints that are riveted to the vert of the paper. Rivets are a thing. It almost lines up wellish. I would need you to. This is gonna be rough. Okay. <sighs> Getting moments where there is an intersection between these two planes is gonna be impossible. Because the edge loops don't line up, and even when they do line up, it's always usually impossible. But. And also just the number of controls, the number of edge loops that don't match at all, that's whatever. There's some experimental stuff in Unreal where you can change from being skinned to certain bones to other bones. I could s oh, fuck, I don't know how deep I want to get into that stuff. There'll be a polish at the end, I don't want to rely on it.
And I could be thinking about this all wrong. Solve it with art, make them, make the lines become 3D. I mean, they're kind of going in that direction anyway. Thickness. Doesn't matter if the lines penetrate through the back of the paper. Who gives a shit? Wow, I wish I'd done that before I made all the goddamn blend shapes, though. Maybe that doesn't matter. Okay, if I give them thickness. I need to rivet them. I think rivet is the right way to go. I think I'm gonna rivet them. I'm gonna play around with patch loops. Yeah, that lines up better. Kinda. Sorta. Yeah. I wrote a script at one point that attaches rivets, so... I'll show you that in a sec. Hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself. It's different. Why are you doing that? All of a sudden. Is it always doing that? I just didn't notice. Because, like, what the fuck is that? Oh, there was a bug with this, wasn't there? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay. Still, what the fuck is that?
There's nothing that should have moved that. Okay, so my up vector and my in vector are the same vector. That's, you know, probably not good. I wish I'd realized that a long time ago. All right. Um. Whoops. Uh, I see it like this for probably everything because I did this. I, the way I set this up was I like. It's kind of madness. Oh, I saved it. It's on the desktop. That sounds like me. It's calling playing too. So, like, this is how I did it. too far. I can't go back to the script. Let's just fix it live and see what happens. This is probably going to be fine. Sometimes things work out. is up. Your aim vector is your up vector is X. Okay. Yeah, so what should have happened? This should have been 20, and this should have been 0. Um. Which one's the newer one? Let's hide the newer one. I'll double the sizes at some point. Um,
want to skin it and then I want to smooth it because I don't know if I want to keep the smoothness or not. I know I do, I just don't know the degree. Um, that's why I'm being weird about this. Yeah. Okay, I have to do that fix for the other lines as well. So... Um, there's a couple things I need to do here for visibility, just quickly. So, let's just hide this. Make my life easier. So I'm just looking at the paper. our up vectors on all of our aims. Up. One of you is missing. Or not, no. No, there's four. Okay. Okay, and... Bottom line. Vector. Okay. That should be fixed. And now... That'll orient the joints properly. We're looking good here, guys. How we doing? That. Not really, you're. Why forward, huh? That's news to me. What? Were you Y forward before? Because that would imply... I can't imagine why that would be the case. You're aiming. Yeah, Z is this way, X is up. Okay. Okay, so Z is this way, and X is up. Okay.
These are accurate. I clearly didn't orient this joint chain before I ran the script on it. And now I can't go back and run the script on it, so I'm just going to do surgery. So... And that's fine. This will probably be just fine. One, two, three. Why not? Okay. So let's just... This will be fine. Can't imagine why it wouldn't be. Alright. Yeah, now you have the same orientation as everything else. And if I drop in. So it's still hidden. Good. Okay, yeah. Now. Oh my god, so much better. Oh, thank god. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, let's... And delete my type history. Because I still have that smooth modifier in there before the skin modifier, which is not what I want, so... Um... I won't have the skin modifier. Then I want to bring in the skin weight side because I waited it already last night. I don't feel like doing that work again. And then I want to smooth it. And I'll probably bake out the smooth eventually, but... Um... Yeah. Now we're back to having a really cool looking sheet of paper. That's right. my fucking flower sack, guys. Hey, Danlo, what's up, man? Yo, dude, I'm bringing paper today, man. Fucking into it, man. Nobody else will appreciate this. You might, actually. Okay, so, I wanted... I'm not crazy, the paper is very large on the screen, right? Uh, so it's not like I was just being ridiculous here. So, I, I don't... Whatever. So yeah. Uh, I wanted a piece of paper and I was trying to figure out like how I wanted to rig it and how I wanted it to move and stuff, because I really didn't like the one I made before. So I thought... So I was trying to come up with something that would give me a lot of control but still kind of be playful, where I didn't have to go in and noodle every shape every time. I could kind of like define a shape and move it around, and it would like, you know, just rapidly do something cool. I figured if I came up with a cool enough rig, it would just sort of, you know, do papery stuff. And it took me a while to figure out how to do it, and then it kind of came to me. And so here's the deal. There's three curves. One at the top, one in the middle, and one at the bottom. With five clusters, five CVs in the curve. These control the curve. Um, I rebuild the. I have a rebuild modifier on the curve, so that it always keeps it uniform. I loft a surface over those three curves that is also, also always rebuilt. I have the... This is kind of the base, and what this does is it creates this... This surface, right? Right here, which is basically driving everything. I have the surface. The surface is obviously bigger than the paper. The surface can be whatever. These controls all just drive this NURBS. Um, the NURBS surface. Now if you're looking closely, you'll see there's joints. There's a joint chain that is also five joints running along the top, the bottom, and, and the middle of the paper. 
The joint chain is constrained to the furthest left edge of the nerve surface as its base. Um, it's uh, I'm using a point on surface node, so I'm finding the UV that is like I'm getting zero in the U, and setting the base of the joint chain to be there. And then I'm I basically have a static go along the arc length of the nerves surface and find the um, find a distance that is you know the the distance I need it to be a static distance for the paper. Uh, and plop down the other joint there and aim the original joint at that joint. I'm just doing that repeatedly. And so what's happening is as I move these earlier controls, it's kind of moving that joint chain up and down the surface. So you're seeing like, see those little... Here, let me hide this and show this. Yeah. So now you can just see the joint chains moving up and down the surface. Oh god, don't crash. No! Oh god, don't crash. Oh fuck, I don't know what I saved. Oh damn. This is fine. This will be fine. I wanted to do it again. It'll reinforce the learning. It's important. <laughs> okay. So. Oh god. See, this is the worst kind of crash. Because now it's crashed, but it's giving me hope. But there is no hope. It's crashed. It made the noise. Now it's like you gotta kill your baby, right? I don't want to kill the baby, Dan. It's over. Maybe I'll leave it in the background. So I'll open up another Maya. That'll be... just lost all the work I did so far. <laughs> like I saved. That's fine. All right. Whatever. I'll talk about it more later. <laughs> That'll be faster the second time around. It sometimes make a it makes a recovery file if it does the pop up, but it's not. I'm gonna have to control it, delete, close it, which means there won't be a recovery file. I don't think. Actually, sometimes there is. You're right. My uh, crash recovery file. I've been surprised by that before. Like there's the one it does to the app data local temp, but I think there's another one too. Because I don't think it'll have one in like. Yeah. Yeah, there's no crashes here. Oops. Yeah, Mobu. I don't know anything about uh, Mobu. 
You live in a totally different world for me. Your shit all looks like magic as far as I'm concerned. God damn it. I swear, there might be another, um... So I gotta Google it. I thought there was another recovery file. Pretty much, he's talking about Motion Builder. Mobu is code for Motion Builder. Oh, I think there's a... Or maybe... Is there backup? Backup is enabled by default, and I never have it. I usually just save more frequently than I did today. Killing it. Hey, poor Pocky. Sorry, I just lost the work I did so far this stream. It's not the end of the world. It's all part of the process. I am going to check one more time in case, like, Colin, maybe the control delete safe now. Right, give me a little bit of wishful thinking for a minute here. So we have to have a local temp. No. No auto save. Where did I even save this? Stand large, huh? Oh, 
Okay, we start again. That's worse feelings. I can think of worse feelings. I had the swine flu once. This is not as bad as the swine flu. The swine flu was worse. So, let's see how long have we been streaming. So, slightly less than two hours. We're gonna get back to where we were in half an hour. Here's how we're gonna do it. Step fucking one. Start from where we last ended, which is fixing a couple things here. First up, what we fixed was the bug where we were aiming, uh, our aim and our up were the same. Let's fix that again, because that was causing weird issues. Joints. Where was that? Shamil up factors. Okay, all the up factors have been moved. Four, 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 good. Second thing. The very last thing I fixed was on the joints, the bottom chain, orient constraints. What do you just be a constraint to? The rotation controls. Controls. joints to be not aiming in the right direction still. Why? Oh, am I just in world space? Yeah. <laughs> What else is weird that I didn't fix before is these controls of a different game than these. Do they? Yes. So really these controls need to have 90. It's gonna fuck things up in weird and interesting new ways.
Seems like no problems came from that for some reason. So here we are. <laughs> I'll almost certainly regret that later. Um, now let's rig the paper. Scan. Uh, to... Select hierarchy. Scan bytes. Let's... Port skin weights. That was where I fell. Yeah, it looks like it was. Let's smooth. Save. <laughs> Poor Ponky, you asshole. <laughs> okay, so that was the part where I was fixing things. Then there was the really time consuming part where I made all the blend shapes. Let's not worry about that just yet. Uh, let's. Yeah, so I'm just not going to do that part that I did earlier just yet. I know I can. I'll do it later. Should this do that? Is this accurate? Yeah, that is what it should do. It's following the nerves. Dave involved. I wanted, like, if he still had a... I thought it would be fun if he ever does that, um, those streams again where he's, like, teaching people to animate. I want to give a rig for it. <laughs> but it'd have to be a rig that's... It'd have to be, like, a Gwen rig. Like, something unnecessarily... Like, rig... Over rig, like, something like a windmill or, like, something that's... Like a prop, something that you don't usually give character to. Because that's the fun shit, right? Like, what if this was... What if I gave you a rig where you could make the paper walk? This one isn't designed for that, but I could. Be like a flower sack. Paper would be like, yeah. Alright, I'm done, sorry. Okay, focusing. So... So the reason Let's see if I can't because I'm fucking paranoid now. Um Right. And one of the things I was thinking about before he crashed was I want these lines when I take them. And I put them into this paper space. I want those lines to actually move with the paper, and I was thinking about how I wanted to do that. Mm. And I was going to have to redo all the blend shapes anyway to make them 3D, so you know what? This is- we're basically back where we were. As far as I'm concerned, we've un- we're back where we were. How long has it been? It's been like, what, a minute? No big deal. Save, commit, push. I'm gonna use the restroom and think about how I wanna do this. I'll be right back. 
sinking throne. I did no thinking. That's pretty typical. So, oh, let's just open up the rivets. I wrote a script at one point that would rivet a control or a joint or some input object to a, a vert on a poly mesh. So let's find that script and see what it does and see if we don't get ideas about what we're doing here. In general. So let's zero out our crap. I should have given rigs to. Well, uh, I want to make. Dave knew what he wanted to do for his class. Next time I'm going to give him a rig. The most outrageous flower sack rig. Get back to the fundamentals. <sighs> right, no, this is not what I want. Where's the... This is Punamesh. I stole this from the internet. No, I didn't. I stole the first one. Not this one. Uh -oh. No, this is definitely stolen from the internet. I would never write this. Yes, I did right. Thank you. 
Alright, so if I'm going to constrain an object to the closest point on the mesh, one of several things has to happen. I want to move the controls closer to the point on the mesh. Which means, yes, I am going to several things to do that. <clears throat> All right. doesn't look right, does it? Oh well, yeah, because it's aiming this way. That's expected behavior. I, mean, I could change the up vector to not do that, but I don't want to. This is kind of the point. It would aim like that. Actually, you smooth it more. So we don't get a harsh fall off here. I do just generally like the way this looks better. You know, we're gonna have to rivet to this mesh. That's just what we're gonna have to do, because it looks better. has more uniform edge loops. Am I kidding myself? I don't think I am. I think you are. Yeah, it's just gonna need a weight pass either way. Whatever. Okay, fine. This one it is. This is edge loops closer to where I want them anyway. So now, you are where you are when you're in paper space because your paper space is defined as.
these are the DAG notes that you're tracking to. So let's just put those DAG nodes directly on a vert for all of you. And then rivet those DAG nodes to that vert. Shall we? You never paint weights anyway. Do that again. <laughs> oh yeah, that was by then. Oh, uh, you'll kind of see in the end. What I want is like, so I want the paper you to. I don't know what the UI will look like, but you click, maybe you click the paper, maybe you just click something on the paper, I don't really know what yet, but you click the paper, the paper kind of spins up, the lines fly off of it, maybe like move a bit, and then pull out hard and become, uh, they pull out hard, and I don't know if they're gonna like vibrate real quick like bass strings, or if they just pull straight out. And that becomes the, gr and then the world pops up out of the grid. That's kind of what I got in my head for like how this is going to look. Paper comes up, like flutters, pulls off the words, the lines actually pull off of the paper, um, pull taut. So they go from being thick to being these thin lines, drop down to the world. Um, and that becomes like the grid lines that the, the level spawns out of. It'll be like probably half a second, maybe like 20 frames. It might have to be longer actually. I might make it longer just because I need to cover up a slight level load there. That's the so goal. Cool. I don't think it'll be that hard. Like I should be able to get this done this weekend. I just really really got into rigging this fucking paper. But I mean, in my defense, like, it had to be... I don't feel bad about that. <laughs>
Game has real problems, like that I should be tackling. I really enjoy not having a producer. This is kind of fun. Uh, like, it's Sunday, guys. Fuck off. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh. The problem is I only work on Kai on like the nights and weekends, so the general attitude is like, eh, I feel like doing this. <laughs> I got really into rigging this paper. I don't feel bad about it. I feel a little bad about it. I have to fix that UI. I was talking to Ichiro like at the beginning of the stream, because he popped in. And he reminded me that I have, like, to actually, at some point, <laughs> figure out the UI UX for this game. <laughs> uh, I don't really have a deadline for that. If I did, I'd take it more seriously. That's one of those things where the second you figure out what that is, it's probably going to change other shit, too. Yeah. So now, you know, these gotta be a different color. This is, I deserve a better UI for myself. I deserve a new fong. God damn it. So see Dan, I also need to make selection sets at some point, but like, it's not going to be that hard. You take these, they move from this position, from paper space to world space, they have some flourish in between, a blend shape gets them from this shape to like their final pulled tights shape, like it should be fine. I don't think this will be hard. So when they're on the paper, we rivet them to the paper. How do we do that? We have this script from the internet. <laughs> Thought I wrote this, but I apparently hated it enough that I put at the top, I got this from the internet, which is new for me. Shit, don't know where I thought I might need that.
Oh no, also not that. <laughs> Input object is uh, you're tracking to. Paper space. Maybe this will just work. No, invalid syntax. Oh. No, should be LFRT mid T mid LF. What the shit? Oh yeah, that's probably just terrible skinning. It's kind of looking gnarly though. Weird. Paper should dance. So, alright. Oh, I know I'll get clipping issues, and I'm actually about to make them. One of the reasons why I'm not that bummed that I lost that orc is because I'm going to stop making them be planes, and I'm just going to make them be, uh, like, prisms? I don't know, diamonds that are... Okay, not not like an elongated cube with a lot of edge loops, but the uh, turned, like a diamond. You get what I'm saying. They will have thickness. Um... They must have thickness. It's the only way it'll work. But now I know, like, I can go, for instance, say this again. Because <laughs> every time I talk to Dan, apparently shit crashes. It's all bad vibes up in this. What the hell am I making here? Okay. It is possible to make this rig look like ass if you desire. That is evident. Anyway. So the goal being that you can go from something like this
obviously to look cool in this. It's just like feeling it out. All the lines are on their side now, and I didn't realize that before. What's your deal? X is going. Y is up. Do I like this? I guess I don't care. Do I care? They're gonna rotate. It's not perfect. Point on poly, but what gives you your rotation? Normal? should be. What are you in world space? Z is up, X is forward.
it's almost one. Why am I going for two and a half hours? Did I start that late? Did it start late today? situation at hand here. So you have I don't know how many. Not twenty. That's silly. Ten. That's not near enough. I want more than I had, but not by much. Maybe I don't want more than I had. Maybe that was good enough. I felt like last time I did the blend shapes. Yeah, okay. Let's keep it exactly the same. Oh, let me transfer the skinning for the initial skinning pass. This makes sense to me. Okay. It probably shouldn't, but it does. Let's get one line to look good. Skin and shit going on on the other stuff. I have a sinking feeling that three joints isn't going to cut it. Four joints.
You know, I'm just going to point out that the lead animator from Blizzard is making an indie game and he put 90 joints in a character's eye for each eye. So in reality, if I feel like adding, I don't know, 14 more joints to a sheet of paper, I don't feel like I should feel that bad about it. I mean, in the end, this will be like... Fifty joints total for an entire sheet of paper, which is basically a character. I mean, he put ninety joints in the eye of one character, a single eye. So I feel like hmm. fuck it. Then again, Dave may have no idea what the hell he's doing. He fakes it real well, though. So yeah, I guess have some fun. delete the rivets off of... yeah, okay. So those rivets I added, I hope they delete well. If this wasn't a one-off rig, I would start from the beginning again and rerun all the scripts just differently to make sure that everything is as clean as possible. But this is a one-off rig, so, you know, who cares? If I delete this, do I basically delete all the notes I made? Oh, dagger pass, selection set, raise, get plus this point. Hmm, this might be the only note. Hypershade is gonna work today. No. No, Hypershade's like, no. Can't. That's cool. I'm tired too. I know how you feel, Hypershade. I don't need you, man. We'll figure it out. Dithering. Making me nervous.
fire your rivets away. Let's run the script again. Let's go back to that fix I did. You know, that's already kind of looking better because it sort of matches the paper better. I s it would be more complete if I added another layer of uh, joints. Which would add 14 joints. You have to pretend that these aren't all busted. You have to pretend they're all moving like this one. Forming with a paper. Let's make it complete. I mean, like, what? Like why are we here if we're not gonna do that? What's even the point? Space to paper space switching. Where's the one where I just made them all? Also, how are they parented? It's a hierarchy like. In case you just kind of got. I don't really put much thought into this, it looks like. I do want it to spread from the middle too, just in case for later. middle, left and right. It's half left. Mid left. Mid left. Oh wait, sorry I didn't realize people were here. Hey Chris, what's up man? Dan, could you copy the paper rig and deform all the lines at once? Oh fuck, interesting. I thought it'd be cool.
what you're saying is easier and also so the skin wrapped and baking to blend shapes I don't want to do I have considered having all of the meshes be one mesh and running one blend shape as opposed to several blend shapes that is possible one thing I didn't consider that you just brought up is that I may not need rivets at all if I go with because the paper has no I do still need rivets I don't know how much I'm going to use this, but I have five small stages and a large stage, and I want to make cool transition animations. The animations have to be cool. I'm an animator. I feel like, you know. I can't think of a way to do it with skin wrapping. The reality is I there is entirely the possibility that I make a really intense rig for this and it ends up being uh if I make the transitions too long then that's frustrating for the player, right? Cuz you want to click a level and get into a level pretty quickly, but I also need enough flourish to cover up any kind of level load. I suspect I'm going to need at least a 1 second animation. I suspect I'm going to need a couple of those. And I kind of really want to do this. But it's always worth pausing and considering that you might just be kind of insane. Like this might not be the be the right thing, this could end up being something that's a giant waste of time. There might have been an easier way to do it. You know it's one o'clock here so I'm gonna go get some lunch and I'll think about it. I know there's easier ways to do this, but I don't think they would look as cool. Or they wouldn't have the potential to look super cool, which this does. And for the love of God, if if I make a really intense rig and it ends up being that I need to not use a lot of the features because the it doesn't make sense in the game, I'll just use it for some sexy trailer bullshit. So I'm not really worried about losing work here. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. There's like a 100% chance of that. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna go get food. I have no food in the house, so I actually need to like put on people clothing and go get it. No, Dan, I appreciate... I, uh... You do like a risk assessment or whatever you're supposed to at the beginning of a project, and I'm well aware uh, that the lack of, you know, the biggest problem with working in a game alone is that she'll just kind of have way too much fun doing shit that doesn't matter. It's a high risk, especially for me and especially on, yeah, I know, yeah, I just don't care. It's probably bad. No, I should focus. Uh. I'll think about it. I'm gonna go get some lunch. How are things going? Um, you've settled in now. You've been up in Montreal for like a month and a half. God, has it? Oh, it's probably been longer. Jesus Christ, it's been way longer. Oh my God. You've been up in Montreal since before GBC, right? Five months, yeah. It was like fucking yesterday, man. Time flying. I feel like I just fucking started this game. <laughs> oh 
Holy crap, we're well into 2018, aren't we? What year is it, Dan? <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go get lunch. I'll talk to you later, man. Oh wait, shit, no. We stream. Host. I always forget that part. I don't know to be on. I'm just gonna book it. Later.